Good morning. Let's see, initiate our uh, June Park and Tree meeting. Let's start by doing the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Angela, if you would please do a roll call. Matthew? Present. Lena? Present. Wally? Present. Nancy? Here. Deborah? Present. Uh, Bob did call me, let me know he wasn't going to be here. Yep. So. so we have a quorum. Got it. Sounds good. Um, time reports. I, I have one for the safety fair for all of us. Okay. I, Told myself to send it in last night, and then when I was laying in bed going to sleep, I went, oh, I'll do it in the morning when I get up. So I just went, oh, I'm going to do it when I get home. And you sent me one also for the last um, meeting you guys, or the last, was it? Ivy? Yes, the Ivy Pool, but I still don't have everybody's time for the Arbor Day. So I will go back and look. Okay, yeah, so Arbor Day is the only one I don't have everybody's for, and I'll go back and look who has turned it in, but... I think most of you were there, so if you can maybe get that to me. I'm pretty sure I did. So. Okay, I mean, I'll look and see, but I know I just, I think I only have a couple, so. Okay. We're trusting Wally to take care of this Saturday. Yeah, Saturday's good. <laughs> um, take a look at the uh, meeting minutes from our last meeting, and uh, if there are no changes, uh, get them. I found uh, something we might need to change is on the second page under Weddell Bridge. It says, it's like the third line down, Springman, Springman reminded the group that this is specialty, I think it's supposed to be work, not walk. Oh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> specialty walk. Well, you never know, you know, Chinese food. Yeah. Specialty walk if you go across it right now, right? <laughs> yeah. Apparently I was. Okay. Get that corrected. Thank you. when you make a motion when you move it mm -hmm. with correction yep <clears throat> I second that okay we have a motion to approve and a motion to second uh, I have a vote to approve with the one correction from walk to work um, okay. all up in favor say aye. aye 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 all opposed same sign Motion is approved. And let's move on to public comment. You have a comment? Yes. And uh, <clears throat> start off with just for the record, since it's recorded, state your name. My name is Luke Rice. Good morning. I um, was wondering if the um, let me say um, the ability to have the public comment could be even at a later time during the meeting, um, just based on the fact that there's a lot of information being passed, and um, might like to interject um, without without just being the first one sometimes, right. if that's possible, um, because I, you know, once once the meeting gets going, it's like, oh yeah, and it jogs my memory to to like, oh yeah, this this would be a good point, um, and I would like to help, and then 
um, by the time the next meeting rolls around, if I lose my notes or something, it's like, oh my gosh, I had so much to say, um, but then I, you know. Yeah, I understand. How does Roger's rules line up with that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Typically, sorry, meetings like this are, um, are work meetings for the committee. And so they're not like a town hall meeting that you see on TV and stuff like that, where people where there's a back and forth or people are are able to comment whenever there are times for the committee to work out uh, the, the items on their on the agenda. Now, if it's a public hearing um, or there's this public comment period on the agenda, that's the time for comments from the public. But um, typically when it comes to stuff that the committee is working on, it's not really up for suggestions right at that time we have other means for gathering those and so um i'd be happy to um give you my card and uh and angela's card and we can take your comments as soon as you think of them shoot us an email uh or give us a call and, and let us know what's on your mind and we can get it in front of the committee also. that's a, that's exactly what i was going to say you can send me an email and then i can i can get it on there and and then we can address it when, when awesome. during the meeting yeah okay, okay. good, good. Thanks, Luke. That's all. Um, the other thing is, after the meeting, you could tell me what you're thinking. Okay. I keep these, all of them. I got a big box of them. <laughs> there's, so, yeah, there's certainly no reason why you can't approach a, a counselor or a committee member or anything with any comments that you might have as well. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Because, exactly. yeah, I was just kind of like, what, what, you know what I mean? Like, how yeah. do I get my two cents in or whatever? Right. That's it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, just don't approach Counselor Trask. That would be the end of it. So <laughs> other than that, you're okay. He's joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, right. Luke. Thank Thanks. you, guys. We have, like, I have office hours every Thursday afternoon. You're welcome to come and talk about any items or ask any questions as well. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Liz. Any other public comment? Anybody online? No. Nope. Okay. Let's move on to old business. Uh, beautification committee update. Yes, please. Just since it's recorded and. Do I have to say it? Uh, no. Thank you. But you could <laughs> just start by stating your name just so it's on the recording and. We'll go from there. I'm Patty Hulk, Sweet Home Beautification. Mm -hmm. Good morning. morning. Um, just bring you up to date a little bit. We've uh, resumed our somewhat normalcy and um, our regular work parties will start with next Tuesday. Uh, and that will always be the second and fourth Tuesday of the month, unless there's something that comes up um, that we can't do that but otherwise it will be our monthly meetings are held the second thursday of the month um they'll be at 1 30 in the afternoon and the place has not been determined at this point okay and that that'll be caught up we'll catch you up with that um right now the median strip is planted and and you all know pots are in place shea point has been planted um Clover and Fern Ridge and 228, those two entrances are being worked on. Had a little glitch in uh, flowers, and so that's a little late coming, but um, it'll be worked on. It won't be completed this year. It will be somewhat lovely, but not complete. Uh, either of those two places. We are, what else are we doing? I think, you know, we don't have anything great and spectacular. I will say that the uh, plantings at all of the entrances are going to pull from the medians and there will be more shrubbery used with in between impact color okay. um, that will be going on in those two places so that when people come to town, they're smacked awake right away. Yeah. <laughs> and that hopefully uh, is what we will achieve. Um, Otherwise, I, I think that's about it. We are just moving along now and had a little break, but we're headed out and moving on. Any questions? I have a question. Yes. So when we we pull ivy and things like that, would you guys like to be involved with that? I would like to be notified uh, and, you know, let our volunteers know. So um, 
we could see. But yes, we'd like to be somewhat involved. So Angela can. or Brian, do they have to fill out a volunteer form for that? We sh they should already, we should have, should already have volunteer okay. forms for uh, file for anyone. Who but we may need to update those or, or check on the status of if we have volunteer forms for so each one of our volunteers has a form they feel like I'm new to this job. So. Yeah, yeah. So um with our with the city's insurer, uh -huh. um, CIS, just to make sure that we are because we do provide workers compensation insurance mm -hmm. when people are volunteered. Mm -hmm. And so we need to have information from um, essentially and we can provide the the forms to you. Um, but essentially, it's just uh, keeping track of uh, making sure there is a signed form for each volunteer and then keeping track of the hours that they you know what what time and place they were right. volunteering so that it can be matched up if an incident were to occur. Right. And so we do that for our park and tree committee volunteers uh, for any ivy pulling and stuff like that. But we would do it for education. OK, and where would those forms come from? Um, where, how would I, I have a bunch on my from, counter right now? Yeah, we can okay. we can provide them directly. To OK. And Patty, I believe we have some for beautification because I remember seeing some, we but do. we just need to make sure that if yeah, you have I know. volunteers. I'm pretty sure there are a few new volunteers that you would not have. Then that would be perfect to yeah. have them. Okay. okay, great. Patty? Yes. Please tell the committee your color choices are amazing. They're so deep and rich. Oh, really? Yeah. That's good to hear because it was a bit of a problem. The wrong colors and the wrong flowers came. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were, we knew they were not going to make the impact they normally do. Know. They're beautiful, they just... but um, good. That's good to hear because they're a little disappointing to us. So oh, no, yeah, I don't think that way. They're just, they're yeah. just good. Good to hear. Just... I have heard that comment yeah. from others as well. Um, that catch me out and about that they're they're thankful for the change, and um, that it was a good change. So, so we'll see. Yeah, I, I just want to comment that the entire work that's been done is amazing. Yeah, well, good. I'm glad, I'm glad it's well received. It makes a big difference in the city. Makes a that. huge difference. Thank yeah. you for recognizing that. Yes. Um, Thank you. OK, I think. Oh, I'm not so sure that this is the place to mention that. And I'm sure there are those here that would let me know. Um, I would just like to file a little comment on the signs that are up on the entrance signs, the rotary sign, the tree sign is wonderful, but I don't understand why those large signs are hooked so close and directly on the city side. I brought that up and last week. Did you? They're not very attractive. Oh, Greg answered it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Put it back on Greg. Same answer that we discussed. I Somebody, there you go. No, so the signs right now were attached on both ends on the interest signs. Um, that was they were made by the rotary, and then the other one's a tree sign. I think the ultimate goal is that we're going to have brackets on the side, and we would like to have uniform signs right now. Those, and I think I agree with you, it, it seems a little large, um, but it also announces their meetings and stuff. So, for right now, that's where we felt we could put it without in, in, impeding anything else until we get those brackets up. All right, Greg, I have a question. Did so did those groups? Well, so far it's the rotary. The tree thing is city, but so did they have to pay a fee for that? As I understand it, I do not know if they paid a fee or not, or if they even have to. Because any group could put a sign up there. Yeah, it, you know, I I have seen other towns where you have you know VFW, rotary, right. you have other organization signs. Uh, it could even be hospitals that are partners. Um, it really comes down to what that relationship is and what we want to do as partners with that. And I think this is kind of new territory for us. And I think any improvements and comments, I think, were, are welcome to us. So. So who does it? It goes through the city. So this is actually one of the goals that we want to look at this year is how we do signage and wayfinding signage as part of our streetscape plan. Good. So. Um, I think there's a lot of conversations that still need to be had, and we definitely welcome any comments and ideas on all of that as well. Um, as far as I know, the rotary sign and all of that has been in the works for a couple of years, and it just finally made its way up. Um, but as we're moving forward, 
I think there are some opportunities for ways to um, support our organizations, but present it in a um, more aesthetically pleasing way. But I think that's going to take a little time to kind of work out. I'd also love to change the way we do some of our signage in general, and just it could do a really nice job to make Sweet Home look um, a little extra special. I mean, I, I love our Welcome to Sweet Home sign. And to me, it, it kind of nice. takes away from the beauty of our sign. But, you know, that's probably another subject, like you said, working on it. But we we definitely are going to want to come back and get some input on that as we get a little closer to. And I think for right now, um, Director Springman's trying to come up with some ways to make it work in the interim as well. So. I guess I'll have to go look at it. I don't even I haven't noticed it when you drive into town. Oh, I know I just haven't. I haven't. It hasn't that caught is. my eye yet. You're watching the road. They're yeah. on the monument right below our signs. Yeah, so I just got the great big. I, I'm sure now that it's in my head and I look, I go, how did I miss that? Right. And I'm not sure you can even if you're driving by at 35, 40 miles an hour, you're going to be able to read the meeting times, but right. they're there. Yeah. So, OK, well, that's a good point. Thank you. Yeah. And to piggyback off that, I don't have very many of your volunteer forms. Yeah. So I will go verify. Um, so I need volunteer forms from all of you also. Um, and so I will go verify who I have and who I don't and send that email out today. So actually, could they do it right at the end of the meeting? Yeah, there's you actually, have them on your desk. There's a bunch of forms right at the them out. Yeah, so there's a bunch of the packet. Counter. So Angela, do we all I've had this done like four times now. Do we do the background check thing also? No, they don't need to do that. No. Uh, no back you don't need to do the background check part of it just the um okay. i filled all that in when i did it i i ignored that part <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sure. laughs> all right thank you very much for that update for the beautification uh weddle bridge <laughs> well, I looked at Greg and he looked at you. So, <laughs> so the status of the status of the bridge. Sorry, status of the bridge. Um, we Greg and I met with the Jamboree last week to discuss options. Um, the and I reached out to the to the bridge inspector to get some clarification. Um, they're standing by their their advice, which is to limit. Uh, use of the bridge to 50 people at any one time and no vehicles going across at all um, until uh, more work is done. We did reach out to have to some a firm to see about getting a load test um, or to have it have it analyzed to see what kind of load it can handle in its current state. And the price tag on that was approximately thirty three thousand. And so we felt that that money would be better put toward actually replacing boards on the bridge itself yeah. um, and, and you know, something that would actually be a part of the bridge rather than just paper about the bridge. So um, where we think stand right now, the, the Jamboree is looking into uh, getting some, they, they have a, a firm that does all their stages that um, does, uh, you know, the scaffolding and the and the and the portable stages and everything they are looking into whether it's possible to shore up the bridge in some way during the jamboree so that it can be used without restriction uh but they would still not allow any vehicles on the bridge they just mm -hmm. want pedestrians to be able to move back and forth um and so that that firm is looking into it they apparently have an engineer a structural engineer on staff for that firm um, my when I talked to the bridge inspector about that in my correspondence, he they expressed some concern about the idea of doing that because I guess the way the underside if you can't just shore up the underside because portions of it are hanging, um, and so it's it's not clear exactly how um, how it could be shored up, but we're still looking into it. Jamboree obviously is very motivated to try to get um, something done so that people are not uh, so that there's no restriction on people walking back and forth. But um, it's still unclear exactly what that'll be. So with the. Bridge day coming up on July 29th, we're still good for that day, correct? 
Yeah, it's technically not called the bridge day. I mean, that's oh, what we, we were. I just told you. Yeah. But yeah, so we're not, we don't necessarily have to be on the bridge. And there is a certain amount of people we can have on the bridge. It, no, it's just not the math. I was just but, thinking yeah. about our money gathering yeah. beyond the $33,000 to fix the bridge. Yeah, and we can talk about, I actually have that on here. We can talk about what we're going to do for that and, you know, have okay. some sort of uh, booth or, I mean, table perfect why not and that's the other portion i need that we did discuss with the jamboree and uh need to bring up is they they very much are interested in helping out and gathering donations um they uh are would would love to have a booth one side or or both sides of the bridge um that could be staffed with people telling about the bridge and what what the bridge needs and uh collecting donations and things like that uh, at the same time, they did say also that they started reaching out to their donors and um, Safeway has already uh, committed to donating a sum of money and the um, apparently the Sweet Home Community Foundation has committed to match donations. And so um, I think there's some good op avenues for um, for magnifying the impact of donations that we could gather. Good. But um, but if any of you who would like to staff a uh, a booth at the Jamboree about the bridge, um, we can certainly get that going and gather some volunteers to be able to and some materials for for people yeah. to give out. I go there the whole time anyway. Gives you a home base, I suppose, for attending the Jamboree. Yeah, have a real quick question. I know Andrew are going to talk about it in a minute, but. Um, so the Jamboree starts closing down Sankey Park. Is that, that 29th open? They start putting up their fences. Yeah, they, they don't do it until that Monday, I think. Oh, okay. And I'll, I'll, ver I'll verify with Robert just to let him know that we're doing that on that day. But I, you, typically it's that Monday okay, before. I know Ashley helped set up and she thought it would be closed, but yeah. No, I'll make sure. Mm -hmm. um, I will touch base with them, but typically they start on that Monday. Okay, start. I'm going to skip the next one because Greg walked out oh. and I'll come back to it. <laughs> now I see where you're going to talk about it here at the Lower Sankey Park donation celebration, hence Bridge Day. <laughs> I brought it up because yeah. I couldn't find Bridge Day on either side. I didn't even catch that was the well, name. And for <laughs> this, this year we're going to do the donor celebration. So yeah. what, I, what I'm doing is, and it, so if, moving forward we will do the bridge day and we'll do it closer to that date that yeah. we have so that 15th, way i can right so yeah. we won't have conflicts in the right. future um but in the future that's what we'll call it okay. um just this year we're tying it in yeah um so for the i should have the actual hard copy invitations back this next week okay. so i will start mailing those out and then i will start i will have an ad in the paper and i will have adam throw a facebook invite out so that hard copy invitations are going to go to the donors um and then public will get it either via facebook or via paper um just because i want to make sure the donors have an actual copy for the yeah. invite um we uh, mayor coleman um said that she would do um a speech presentation um for that day and then we can determine you know having a table for you know the bridge presentation also maybe to highlight phase three um, grant um, project, you know, so there's a, a variety of different things we could have that day. Um, any other activities? We haven't really gone that far yet, um, but we want to we want to make sure the focus of that day is for the donors that donated for that phase two. Mm -hmm. Having the accessory um, information is important but i want to make sure that we are focusing that day on the people that actually help make that project go through yeah. so um whatever a other activities we have um are just kind of icing on the cake so okay what time are we gonna I think it's 11 i think i have on there just gonna look i my computer is not working great this morning so which is why i don't have it with me i'm oh. having issues with it so um i think it's i think it starts at 11. i think i have it the 29th at 11. and you will all i will send you all out um the actual invitation oh oh you know what we had a copy of it last time and i have that in here yes 11 a.m <clears throat> Okay. So I'm 
if folks think it's worthwhile, I mean, I'm happy to kind of we can set up a table with our new tablecloth. Thank you, everybody. And our park tree banner, park brochures. If, and then if there's some information about past grant, the future grant for the park, you know, something that's digestible for the public, we could do that as well as maybe a history piece on the bridge. I know there's different things written up about it. So maybe just a little bit about that, but really probably, I mean, the focus should be on the donors and everything, but we can kind of showcase, you know, where we've been with the park, where we're going with future grants, the bridge, the community pavilion grant. I still have a great big, large plastic water bottle. On in. <laughs> I have one too. Yeah, cool. <laughs> we can have a couple. One at both ends. Can I ask a potential request as well? Yeah. We had a former senator, um, May Yi, who helped move the bridge and donate and various things in the past. Um, she had a plaque. There was some vandalism. The plaque was taken down. We'd like to put the plaque back up and do a little honoring of her on that day too yeah um which would tie in beautifully to the history piece because most of what she did was during the 90s and, and so forth as well so if you all would be open to that i think that could be a yeah. really yeah, absolutely nice additional piece great oh, who was that who was me she was a state senator a former state senator and um a fair amount of fundraising for this bridge and it's part of who got it moved as far as I understand. Oh, nice. You got some thoughts, Sean? Uh, we remounted it yesterday. Oh, cool. <laughs> you guys mounted it yesterday? From Dominic, yesterday morning. Here, Mike, you shut up. Yeah, it was, um, the Sean, vandalism it was it actually, green? it was ripped off there you go. the Weddell Bridge um, and a citizen for whatever reason, found that plaque in in Ames Creek and brought it to us. Huh. So um, we've had it for a few months, and and so that's kind of the history wow. behind it a little bit. Good. Yeah, I think Kelsey's getting upset with your lack of motivation to get things done quickly. Yeah. So you might want to pick it up. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They, they move so quickly every time I turn around. It was already <laughs> which is very admirable. So thank you. Okay, skipping back up. Greg, the uh, Dahlenberg Bridge, any update on that? Um, Dominic is in training at Clackamas College. Uh, to, he's got to support his certifications that he has. Um, and so he has been giving those updates. So hopefully maybe we can do that at next meeting. But yeah. I don't have personally any update right now. Do you know who it was that was going to be the mover? No. Okay. Just rumor. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was just saying, because it's dry, it would be a great time to be able to get in there and, and do that. I will, the I will bring it up, and I, I, I would imagine we could have some sort of uh, update next month. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, IV removal. So... The team went in and cut a bunch of ivy off the trees um, on the southeastern section of Sankey Park. And I would just like to say, uh, actually cutting it off the tree wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I've never done. So I brought all kinds of tools and cutting it really went pretty smooth. Ripping it up off the ground was another story. Um, that falls into the, if it was at my house, there would be a big backpack container with some pesticide, just kill it right there. But uh, have you guys had any, uh, so I sent Dominic a note on it the other day and asked him if, I assumed from all the other things you guys are doing, that just fell off. And he said, yeah, I just plum forgot. So do you have any plan of going in there with the tool and dragging that stuff out of the ground? Not immediately. Okay. Maybe the tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's going to grow back on, like, immediately. Right. Oh, also, Angela, didn't you say that there's um, <clears throat> some, how do you say it, species in there that we have to be careful and not dig up? <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we have to be careful because of um, natural resource zone and the different um, categorizations of the park um, ripping out native species. Um, and so we just need to be aware of that. And I I know there's ivy everywhere because a long time ago when I, I think when I was on Park and Tree Committee, we went and did a cleanup up there and tried to do some on the hillside. But um, yeah, you just have to be aware of the native species that are mixed in with it. And natural resource zone criteria. We don't know what that is. Uh, it's in our code, and I can send you guys a copy of it. Um, it's one of our code chapters in Chapter 17. But I mean, does it show what the plant look like? What they look like? Um, we can go out and do some plant ID. Um, it's uh, we can just kind of point out some plants and kind just, of look at them. I mean, I think most of the stuff that would be in there would be size tree, maybe some Oregon grape, maybe I'm trying to think. But the ivy's taken over so much that it's entrance. it's pretty much. It choked it all out. It's choked out a lot of the native yeah. species. So I know there's some closer as you go around the corner, right above the creek. There's some more native species right up in there, but the hillside that's right between lower and upper, it's a lot of it's been choked out. So does that make ivy not a native species? It is not a native species, no. Okay. It'll, if you got it cut, you can almost roll it like a mat right. i mean if you have the right implement to mm -hmm. to grab and pull and you're not really digging in the soil you're just like a big mat it's a pain in the butt mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but the beauty is once you get it off then maybe things that are dormant in there might come back might come back and it is very shady in there with all the trees too. So there's only certain species that are going to grow in there anyway. Right. Um, but yeah, it's so thick in there that it's choked out most of anything else that tried to grow in there. So yep. in certain areas anyway. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, will we be having another ivy pulling day soon? Yes. Uh, I don't know about soon. Um, After we'll pick, the jamboree. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to pick another one and go back out there because okay. there's more to do. Oh, yeah. And nobody fell. That was, I was surprised. From the oh, we did a lot of hanging, but nobody <laughs> fell. So there was some challenges getting to some of that stuff. Found lots of lots of old tools. Yeah. And your daughter did. Mm -hmm. Granddaughter. Okay, let's move on to our grant update. So I submit the PowerPoint today. Uh, Blair is um, kind of reviewing it, and then next Tuesday is the actual presentation. You and I need to schedule a little bit of a time because um, the PowerPoint itself is just going to have the basics mm -hmm. in it. And then I want to go through with you some of the criteria that is in the actual grant summary, because those are the points that we're going to need to bring up. But that none of that we don't need to have all of that in the PowerPoint, but yeah. it has to be submitted today. And I'm working on that. Um, one of the things that we had in the past presentation that I couldn't put in this is the donation campaign. Um, unfortunately, I have tasked um, Councillor Trask and all of you to try to work on that, and I haven't had any feedback from you guys about anything being done, and so we really need to start pushing that. We have, it's something I wanted to report on that we had community support. Um, Bob's talked to a couple people, but I've had, besides one, um, I've only had one person donate so far, and so we really need to push that campaign if we're going to get that match. Um, and that is something that we need to make sure by September, if we get that, we're going to need to do that. But it was something that we wanted to try to report on when we did the presentation next week, and I'm not going to be able to report on that. I could say that we have some tentative pledges, but we don't have anything. Um, and one of the things that brought us over the edge last time was that we had we had raised thirty five thousand dollars in two weeks. Right. Um, I can't say that this time. And so I'm encouraging all of you to take a step up and put that as a priority on your priority list to try to get that done, because um, that's something that is very important. We have to have that match or we don't get the grant. So I've been trying. So, so um, Adam put it out on Facebook again. Yeah, uh, I saw but, that. Yeah. So we just need to you can do it all online everything's online um and if someone absolutely needs to come into the office i can figure out a way to fill it out for them in the office so um but that is something and even if they right now just say i'll pledge this and then they can pay it before september just even giving me a pledge coming in sending me an email saying hey i pledge to do this 
this is when I will pay it because it'll be due upon if we get the grant. Yeah. Um, that's that's a way to go about it too. So if you can get somebody to say, yeah, I want to, but I don't want to pay it right the second. Um, so I, I encourage you all to put that on the top of your list. Um, you know, this is important and it would be really great to get this grant and be able to do that. So, but we definitely are going to need that 40% match. So, yeah, I forget last time. When was the money due last time you got a grant? Same thing. It, I, Same time. You need it when we get awarded, we have to have that 40%. No, I mean the, the time frame, because what I've been finding out is there's a lot of things going on right now. So people are putting a lot of their money in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the time frame is, you know, they can pledge, but the time frame is when we get awarded the grant, which is sometime in September usually, um, we need to try to have that match by that time, by the time it's awarded. I don't know the exact date. I'd have to, it's like end of September mm -hmm. um, because we we were awarded the grant at the end of September and then the funding, we could start doing the funding in October. But um but other than that, uh, we put together, we put some pictures together, hopefully, um, you know, they uh, so far I had good news when they got our grant application. They said it looked really good oh. um, The and uh, that they were encouraged that we put in another one. So I'm it's probably because of the person writing it has had some experience at that, I would guess. Well, I will say Ryan helped me do a lot of it. And so Ryan is unfortunately not here anymore, um, but he. Um, he was very pivotal in helping me with that, so I didn't have to do it all by myself. But, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we did a good job again and yeah. hopefully our presentation will go well again. And I'm encouraged, like like I keep saying, we will be awarded. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying that. <laughs> so <laughs> be optimistic. Um, but I think it's going to be a great project. And yeah. this time with our shovel ready, the shovel ready part, um, the way that um, we did that is once we're awarded, we will hire the engineer right away to start working on the, the ADA uh, path because mm -hmm. uh, we will need that will need to be engineered. Yeah. But I think with the um, the stage area, um, the, a lot of that prep has already been done. Um, so I think the stage area, we will just need to get quotes um, yep. and get that part of it done. And then we can actually be working on the stage while we're doing the engineering for the hill. So I yep. think I think we will be able to you know, work this out to where we can do it in stages. Yeah. And I would be perfect. Yeah. I, so Bob told me he's got, you know, Samaritans give him a range. They just haven't given him an exact number yet. And CTC is also yeah. interested. And then he has another business, but he didn't tell me which who that was. Yeah. So. And then he said he was going to donate like 50, 60,000. Yeah, that's, personally. Not what, that's not what he emailed. That's me. what I read. <laughs> I don't know what he actually <laughs> wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's gonna love that you said yeah. that. <laughs> so, yes, I do have one from him, from yeah. him and so, from you, Wally. So thank you. So if if uh, if we were to get donations between now and the presentation, we could actually say it in the yes. presentation. Then, yes. Mm -hmm. Which would help. Yes. So that's Tuesday next week. Yes, at two o'clock. At two. Oh, good. Thank goodness. I had something in the morning. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. And that's back up in Salem, same place? No, we're doing it virtual. It's a virtual one. Oh, really? Yeah. So we won't be, we don't have to go anywhere. We can just sit in here. That's a short trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you have a chance to talk to people, um, for whatever it's worth, I, I'm going to try to hit some, I don't have any, I don't know anybody that has like deep, deep pockets except for Counselor Trask. So mm -hmm. um, that's my only, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but hitting up a lot of people for small donations is a big deal because it shows community support. So, um, you know, it, you know, it, it really doesn't matter the dollar figure. Um, it's the the numbers. I mean, the dollar figure we have to hit, but it's also getting that number to show the community is totally behind this and wants to make it happen. So. And we had a lot last time that were twenty five dollars, fifty dollars. Um, we had quite a few that were those. And so every every penny counts and again exactly it shows the community to support it shows that you know doesn't matter your income range a lot of people are excited about this and they want to support it and so um besides the dollar amount you know we had a huge list of people that donated yeah um our donor memorial doesn't list all of them because many of them wanted to remain anonymous and so that donor memorial would have been huge well, it is huge, but yeah. it would have been even bigger if it, the anonymous donors would have been listed on there. Right. So, which is, I, I think, as a credit to this community, and this community is great at supporting these type of projects. So, 
Um, so I have, uh, I'm optimistic that we will reach our goal. Oh yeah, we will. Yes. No. no. Do what you want. Yep. Bring back the money. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, and I can, um, we can create some sort of flyer um, that has kind of the website on it. And we can do that. If um, if you want to go door to door, I can take that info and try to put it on a flyer. And we can do it that way if you want something. Okay. I would recommend that you don't physically collect money door to door, no. but invite people to come mm -hmm. to City Hall for, for the actual transaction. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's all online, so the flyer would have our website on it and how to get that. So the the form and everything, um, we put it online this year. So and it's not that bad to fill out. I was confused a little bit. I was like, uh oh, how many more pages is there before I get to the part where I pay? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to pay. I had to keep putting in information I'm like, stop asking me questions. I just <laughs> want to pay money, but it's not bad. So I have a question. I don't know if it should be here or in new business. So I'm really concerned about our bridge. And so I, I'm thinking, you know, we're, I know to get this grant to finish the park, but what are people going to start saying because the bridge is falling apart and we should be fixing the bridge? I mean, it's a lot of money. I when you add it all up. I don't know what come to total. Well, the bridge we can, you know, it's we can apply for multiple grants at the same time and have them so this grant has already been applied for and so we have to stick with um the criteria and the parameters in the grant that we asked for so we can't just switch it over to the bridge but there are other avenues once we get the the scope and if we can phase it out um there are other grants we can go for you can we can do multiple grants at the same time Good. so and i just i can we're just not just stuck people, doing one else they're gonna say what do you mean you put in a you know, I can't even walk across the bridge, you know, how, you know. Well, the, or, I would point back to the desire to replace the bandstand. You know, yeah. The public was very vocal about that. And so we can't have whiplash going from one project right. to the other. Yeah. Yes, you told us you wanted this. You also want that. We understand. Let's, let's go through the process for that. Send you to Blair. Well, in the Oregon Park and Recreation Grant, we can only apply for that one every two years, but there's other grants. So we'll have to wait another two years to apply again for that one specifically. Um, but there are other grants out there and, you know, we may be able to find one, you know, the historic bridge. There's a lot of historic bridge stuff. And so that's another avenue we can look at for that. Um, it's just this grant specifically that we right. won't be able to do for another two years. And so um, that's there's other avenues out there. There's lots of different avenues out there. So and I bet the complainers will be the same eight people. <laughs> to complain and they're going to complain that they pay their taxes why isn't that taking care of it i mean that'll be the number one that's the one i keep looking for on the city's post so i can respond to it because that happens all the time i wish i could respond differently than just typing but <laughs> that's my limit so far yeah i'm getting mad just thinking about it because i have to look at it okay <laughs> Let's move on to the park system master plan. Yes. There's not much to tell on this. We're still, it's in process. Uh, we are almost done with our current, uh, current conditions memo uh, for the team to work on. Basically, just what parks we have and the plans they have. Um, but it's, yeah, it's mm -hmm. moving forward. I'll let you know when we have more detail, but it's just fun. It's just, Letting the consultants get to work. Right. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Because to me, when I look at the city map of the parks, I can see holes and like here will be some good places to put something. I'm sure they'll come up with the same thing. I did have a promising meeting yesterday where a potential development included in their in their plan that they were discussing a portion of a trail. And hmm. they um, and they said they stuck it in there because they saw it in our master plan. Nice. Oh. And so uh, it it doesn't happen very often, but that's the important reason okay. for one of the important things behind doing these updates is that people notice. Some people do, and yeah. and it also gives us a little clout to try to uh, push those things along. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with the, whenever we talk to somebody about a big development and specific development charges, we will often say, "Hey, if you." 
want a neighborhood park in your development. And um, you can get that spread it off of those feet. And uh, and it's nice to see that in action where we don't have to mandate that a certain size development contribute the land. We can just charge the fees and then they can get out of the fees by donating the land. Nice. Yeah. Um, so it's it seems to be working slowly for sure. Yeah, so that's right. good because that's a change in the last couple of years. So. Is there much room for new developments? There's still room. We've got and um, land. <laughs> yeah, Sweet Home has, when it comes to a buildable land, a land available for residential development, we probably have more than most cities in our side. Okay. Mostly because of the various annexations that have happened over the years a long time ago. We have a, a really large geographical city given mm -hmm. our size. And that's mm -hmm. uh, one of our selling points. And one of the things that is attracting attention in this direction is that other cities our size are either don't have as much as larger parcels or they're impacted by wetlands more than we are. And uh, so that's it's positive. Hmm. Hey, thank you, Blair. Let's move on to new business, the safety fair report. So I'm just letting you guys know the staff. I I think the safety fair went extremely well this year. And big kudos to the and I don't remember his name, the former Sean. Yeah, Sean did a great job in organizing and setting it up. I was really happy with the with the way the program went. And uh um we had quite a few people come. The park brochure is still the hottest ticket out there. Yeah. Um when we explain to people this brochure shows you where all the parks are at. The back has the grid that gives you the this is what you can do in the different parks. There's not one person you mentioned that to that doesn't take it. And usually if they're walking to adults, friends, they hand it to their friend, another one and say, take this, this will answer your questions. So I'm still surprised how many people don't know where all the parks are at, but I probably shouldn't be because when I started on this committee, I didn't have a clue that there were as many parks as there are. So um that was a big plus. Uh, kudos to the team. Thanks for getting there and helping get things set up. Nancy brought the kid gathering tool, which was a large bucket of candy. And uh, we suckered them right in with it. Every it, time I turned my back, Tyson grabbed one. Yeah. <laughs> well, they had to get their passport stamped to get yeah. into the candy well, raffle. Yeah, yeah, the drawing. The drawing, so. I will make sure to get more brochures printed. I, I didn't print as many last time, but I'll make sure to get some more done then. Yeah. We've got a stack about this big left, and then there's probably, there's some that we still need to fold better in there. Okay. All right. I, well, I've just put an order into Gateway for the invitation, yes. so I'll just go ahead and yeah. just add some brochures yeah. to it. I would so, use more. We're okay. pushing our brochures. Did we ever, um, now that the map's there, did we ever think of a place to put it on a board on a kiosk somewhere in town like what the chamber they have there do we have one here we don't have the parks one but on the kiosks we do have i think i think it's the map of the city on the kiosks we don't necessarily have the parks one I, that'd be kind of cool i will try I, to figure out how to information print it. center and I, you guys can figure that out but I, that'd be kind of neat they can't and then have a little thing there they could pull one out if they wanted one to go with them or most people take a picture. Yeah. There'll be somebody like that guy on the State Farm commercial. Free bags. They're giving away free bags. <laughs> I can see that. But other than that, the safety fair went really well. We passed on a lot of information about the Park and Tree Committee. And um, surprisingly, this year, we didn't get a lot of tree questions. Did you get one? one? So it's just fine. Yeah, but last year we must have got a bunch. I mean, there was a lot of tree questions. So it might be worth, in hindsight, besides having our banner up to put up that tree city sign that might draw attention and thought to people, because that was one of the selling points for Sean. How we involved in safety was, well, trees also. Mm -hmm. You know, or you guys complain that we cut down trees in the parks. They're not killing you. They're not falling on you. They're not falling on your homes. So that's kind of an important thing. So getting that message across to people was valuable last year. Okay, let's move on to Harvest Festival duties. Do we get the pies again? 
Yes, and we will talk about this more in August. We're still in planning phases, so I'm not ready to discuss duties and all of that yet. So yeah. um, as a, our August meeting is my kind of um, date to kind of discuss more of the duties and who's doing what. Um, just Harvest Festival is October 7th, so make sure you put that on there as a re reservation. Uh, the date, sorry. October 7th. It's the first Saturday, which is the 7th this year. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so that is the day of it. Um, but like I said, we're working out logistics where things will be. But yes, I still have you guys signed up for the pie. So. Okay. Yep. Can we push our the, uh, the money we get at the pie booth? Can we push that towards like? the bridge or right the sankey grant maybe maybe yeah. more the bridge maybe yeah if, if you tell me exactly what you want to throw it at or if you would just want it general parks projects then we can make sure to put that on there you know when i do the okay. when i do the promotion part yep. of it it's like you know donations from this will go toward this so the chili cook-off is going to go toward the sweet home kids food pack this year okay. um and so i just make sure to add that to all of our media of where that is going so people That's not okay. okay let's uh yeah ruminate on that and yeah. decide in we'll, august we'll vote on it in august and okay. you actually that you can let me know ahead of time because the media is going out now oh, cool. for some of that but um just the duties of individuals we'll we'll talk about more in august so i it, it's not a ton of money, but we don't have anything going towards the bridge at this point. Well, when we do the, the yeah, excuse me, do the jamboree, we'll get we'll have our plastic water buckets on Kelsey, um, <laughs> that we can get money in. I don't know. They write checks up. I mean, good luck trying to get in there. We just have to hang on to them so somebody doesn't grab them and run with them. But but for the harvest festival, yeah. yeah but I mean, we we would already have that money too from right. the jamborees the first in august yep. before we have our next meeting true <laughs> but she's got to get the thing out so right. it'd be good to know who our money's going to go to, to so she could put it on a flyer back to the everything that you know the bridge the i think we need to pick one thing like i said it's not a a, a mountain of money right so um but if we picked one thing, then that's the focal point. So whether it's the community pavilion in the park or the bridge, it kind of gives it a focal point. Right. Okay. That's what we should yeah. identify. So any thoughts from the group? Which one? I would say the bridge. I'm yeah. concerned about the bridge. Yeah, <laughs> bridge. I, I vote for the bridge as well. Bridge. So all in favor of the bridge, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay. Is the bridge. Thank you. Sure. Do you know how much we made on selling pie last year? I have it um, on a spreadsheet. I can look it up and tell you. Seems like it was a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Anybody think of nine days for extra? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we used to do, um, before we did the bake off, um, we did a pie eating contest, and that was just chaos so which is why we switched back to the baking contest so that was um it was funny it was fun to watch and it was funny but um the bake-off seems to go really well um and so i think we're just gonna go back to sticking with that but yes we had a few pies in the face with pie eating <laughs> so that's been quite a few years so um i know it's early but i'm just going to mention to this group the pie bake-off last year when it was started I don't think it was so it was Saturday and by Friday, Thursday or Friday, we still only had like three people that had put in for it. So I mean, there's a lot of people that make pies. It just wasn't. A, and then all of a sudden the the message got out and the word rolled in. So that happens every year. Yeah. Even if the message gets out early, it everybody waits till the last minute. Yeah. So my point is, if you go somewhere and somebody makes a good pie, tell them to make that pie for the pie bake off and enter it, it it didn't cost anything to enter it right yeah you just have to make a pie and put it in so you have to submit the recipe yeah so that i know it's not store-bought right but um you know physically i can't tell whether it's store -bought. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's the only criteria is they have to um submit a recipe and this year we are limiting it to two per person Oh. Uh, we had someone submit six once oh. and um, yeah, it, and that was at the last minute. And so we're limiting it to two so that the competition is a little. Yeah. We can clarify that 
ju- we're limiting it to two that are judged. If they want to provide yeah. more oh. pie to sell, yeah. Yeah. we're certainly open to mm-hmm. selling more slices of pie, but we don't want to have to judge yeah. more than that per person. Yeah. Yes, and depending on how many pies, we might have to have two sets of judges so that, <laughs> yeah. so that people don't get full too right. fast. So, yeah. And I'll bring this up again as we're talking about it, but it sticks in your head maybe if you hear it a few times. Um, it's a really good thing for a parent to do with their kid. So I had my son, uh, he and I made the pie. He made it. I just kind of guided him so we didn't burn the house down. Mm-hmm. And uh, he actually really enjoyed it. And he was really depressed that he didn't win, but, you know, he got over it. And it was a good pie. It was a cherry pie. Yeah. With a lot of smoke. Yeah. It was very good. So. How can you be a judge? <laughs> we you just tell me and I sign you up. We we aren't judges, are we? No. So if you want to be a judge, then you can't work it and you can't show up. You can't come hang out at the booth so you can't see who does what. But we managed that last year. So but you're more than welcome to actually be a judge and not be part of the selling part of it. Once your judging is done, then you can help sell the pie and you can help with that part. You just can't see who's dropping them off. So. And we used a couple of specific judges for last year. Two of them, I think I can get back because I think it was important having Mike from the point Mm -hmm. that kind of solidified, you know, and then getting Dave Bauer with his negative percent body fat who loves (laughs) pot and seeing somebody that skinny eat something that fattening was impressive. So, but he was very happy. Huh? I knew he was a negative person. Yeah. <laughs> I do have to just tell you the first year that Larry won, when Molly was still alive, he was so impressed that Molly voted him to win the pie. That was his biggest thing. I still have the little number that stuck up in the pie, number five. Keep it on the windowsill. That was when Larry was a pie winner, number five for Molly. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Good old Molly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think um, I've already had a lot of people just in the public as well as call me pretty much since February asking me when I'm going to open up all the registration. So it is all open now, nice. but um, just for pie for chili, um, I think I already have four chili signups um, and chili gets limited due to space, but, um, and then I've had people, when are you going to do this? You know, are you going to have this? Are you going to have that? So I have a feeling we are going to have a very good turnout again. Um, so pie is probably i don't know we might have to look at how many get submitted and maybe limit that at some point too but um hopefully it doesn't rain but that ground was soggy we don't talk about rain <laughs> yeah. What's your i don't have a good feeling we do that. not talk about rain between now and then <laughs> I, I would say uh we need an update probably by next meeting of what yeah. the weather yeah. report okay <laughs> i will right my initial accurate my initial one wasn't good when she mentioned the date I was like, oh, misty, but we'll see. <laughs> Come on, wow. usually, usually you're optimistic about this. So I know. I'm, I'm I, counting just, on it, Wally. <laughs> okay, uh, next item. <laughs> Walking path from park to park. Um, I was hoping uh, Josh was going to be here because he's the one that actually walks it. Mm-hmm. And he does that through all the different parks. I wanted to get with him and, and talk about setting that up. Um, as far as the staff, do you guys have any thoughts on that um our thought process was that at each park it would be a map that shows you your you know like here's the walking path to go to all these different parks and the distance it is between each one you know where you can walk from and to and from and to and it would give people the idea that she had of where all the parks are located but then again it gives you people want to know because people want to you know i went out and i walked this far they have to have something to post on instagram or facebook mm-hmm. that i did this so um that would just be a way to get people out if whether you're walking or running you're going from park to park you have a, a map of the designated trail and distances and in my mind that having a something set up like that and then posting it in addition on the uh i can't remember the name of it now i i had it and it just went there's a a couple apps out there that that could be posted on also that that it shows that yeah yep all trails yeah that's it um because i've used that before to find different things so 
I love the idea. It's mainly the staff, and it's not that big of a project. It's mainly yeah. just the staff time to be able to put something like that together. It's something I would love to hand over to a GIS tech that I don't have right now. Yeah. Um, but it's it, it. I think it's great. The only concern, some parks we we some areas we may not be able to do because we have we have a, a number of areas where we really need sidewalks, and we don't want to direct people to walk along the street. Sure. Where there isn't a safe place to walk. So. Yep. Um, but I think there's a lot of possibilities there. Yeah, we could start with something. So I'll, I have a tech that not oh. not the one we've normally used. I have okay. another one. Okay, do you? Okay. But um, your wife? No, no, that's no. She's too busy. Well, we're hiring. <laughs> <laughs> he does stuff like that for me. So okay. um, that's, that's something that could be done. Because all you need is the the route mapped out on it, and then the distance that the route actually physically covers. So, I'll uh, I just wanted to find out if there was any thoughts, you know, like public works or anything that seems like that would be a problem in any way. Or I'm looking for the thing I haven't thought of yet. Like, what would be a? I problem? think it's part of a major, a bigger discussion. I think with the parks master plan and what the trail systems look like and how we want to integrate those. And I think this is probably a good foundation for that. And yeah. Um, I yeah. hadn't given much thought until now, um, but I think it, it is something, a bridge that we're going to have to cross, and it, it was something that we would want to be all inclusive for our parks and trail systems. Right. I'd love to have a GIS layer of just parks. Yeah. So parks and trails, and uh, and it could have designated paths like that. Be fairly easy to to use that as a backbone and then go from there to various publications and, and advertising it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, that's something I'd like to see included in our parks master plan, and as as a as one of our goals to accomplish. It, it really is a staff capacity issue at this point. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll see what we can do. I'll get with Josh, and we'll lay it out. Sure. Rough plan, and then I'll see what I can get put together. So, Mr. Chairman, um, on our minutes, there's two things, and I don't know if you, of course, everybody read it, but so with the walking. Um, route and the park name, we were supposed to submit that form to the, because we came up with the names. Yeah, I haven't done that. Okay. And that's why I'm thinking about this, because we're talking about it. And that was pretty much it. Yeah, all that stuff we talked in the minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just need to stop by okay. Angela and grab the forms and fill them out. They're not very complicated. And that way, then, that, that way we can get the parks named. Yeah. What, halfway there, and what was the other one? Uh, walk about. Walk about. <laughs> Catchy. Yep. Okay, let's move on to City Hall Park. I don't have any updates for you. Nothing, huh? No. Okay. Um, it seems like it things is, are coming in off the coast now, and then they're talking about freezing the harbors again down in L.A., so there's a big fight over the oh, trucking yeah, firm. Supply chains so, and things like yeah. that. Yeah. So I thought maybe it had filled back in and we could get that stuff now. I need to reach out to our donor again and see where that equipment is. Um, earlier in the agenda, Dahlenberg Bridge was uh, was listed and we didn't talk about it. It might be time to circle back to that, um, but that would be a core part of that, of the City Hall Park. Yeah. And I don't know that we have any updates there. The, there is some volunteer organization that wants to move Dahlenberg Bridge for us, but they want to use it in the no, right. yeah, I that think anymore. they've moved on from that, but they still oh. are be willing to okay. help us move it. Well, I and I think we're working through anymore. those things. Yeah, so. but they sounds like they're still on board. So yeah, and Dominic, I I can make sure that he has an update for yeah. you in the next meeting. Yeah, because the last time we talked about it, we were going to temporarily move it to get it out of there because of vandalism yep. and destruction, and set it in the back at least to get it away from everyone until we're ready to put it in the park with the dry mm -hmm. river bed going through there. So well yeah, I, yeah. I know how Dominic works and we've talked about it a couple times and I yeah. would imagine he has an update. I just don't oh, have yeah. it for you. Yeah, no so. problem. Okay. Just, yeah. just a heads up. The Art and Culture Committee is very interested in discussing the idea of um some space back that direction. So behind the park event space, wedding venue type of thing. Mm -hmm. So at some point, they're probably going to bring that to this committee for a larger discussion. Okay. You mean so, over there? Yes. Okay. Yes. So park would be right there. Yes, park there. would be there. Okay. 
then there'd be the trail going and then there'd be a space back over here for with like a gazebo and area for seating um and so forth Where's so the dog park you're talking right here at city hall so we'd be talking at city hall um they're interested in doing that i think behind the space that we're currently looking at it having a dog park because that whole area goes back there's so far. Right oh so they're thinking of expanding that so they're wanting to look into potential funding for that but they'd want to come and talk about that so i right. just wanted to give you all a heads up so everyone's kind of aware of the sure idea. we need to make sure they're invited to the the open houses and things for the parks master plan as well exactly. so those are exactly the kind of thing we want to have included yeah, so if you go out the the city hall park and the dog park were proposed where the fence line is yeah. forward. I think we talked about moving the fence line back maybe a hundred feet for the dog park portion of it because we were going to use the existing fence. Yeah. Um, but um that was part of that whole there's a huge yeah. area back there still that we weren't going to utilize in the plan, okay. the original plan. <clears throat> So that would tie in nicely with the idea of kind of setting up the bridge and a and a uh, landscape dry stream bed and use it as a wedding venue, photography venue, something like that, and an event area further back. That's complimentary. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, if I may. You, you may. Uh, you turn on your mic. It, it didn't come on. Oh, it did not. Uh, there was a time a while back that somebody wanted to build that park, the uh, yeah, the dog park too. Right. Uh, and uh, our former mayor, uh, he was involved in that, and then COVID came along, and so things went in the toilet. But I think I'll have him uh, get a hold of those folks, and okay. and they were they were talking about, uh, and I tell you, uh, Diane Gerson was one of them. Right. She's so going to put money into that. You put money into the, put other. Money into the okay. one at North I knew she was going to do one. I didn't know where. That was my avenue for, for reaching out to the donors was Kyle yeah. Mullen. And so that might be something we can look at. And and uh, I'll, I'll get with him. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to see him today and see if they can work something out to get that taken care of. Yeah. Or, or, or get it started anyway. Right. And it was a pretty good, pretty good amount of money. But now, of course, things are through this guy. But yeah. anyway, I'll, I'll get with him and, and we'll see if we can come up with something. Sounds good. Thank you. Oh, yes. My name is going to put a fence around this the dog park, right? There's it's already tall. three sides of it done. I walk through it and it's like the wooden fence is up almost two feet. So I can think and crawl under that or run under it. Wooden um, fence over here? Yeah, no. Over here. Oh, yeah, that, that, that all would be... The only part, uh, the only fence I think that would be remaining would, is the the tall chain link. Um, the rest of it is all that's actually neighbor's fence that needs to be replaced. And the the immediate neighbor here to the east, we are actually committed to. We we made a deal with them for some property swaps and things like that. And there's going to be a a an area for a walking path that would connect over to the pedestrian path that's at the Duck Hollow subdivision. Um, that all needs to be fenced and would be all part of that same project to get that all fenced yes it's a dog park right we need fences around the dog oh yeah park. oh yeah it would it yeah. would definitely be entire it'd be fenced similar to to north side and with the proposal i'm you know i'm making an assumption here so we were originally going to keep the chain link because we weren't going to do anything back there but probably for aesthetic purposes we may want to change that to the same type of fencing we have at north side because it looks really nice um just to make it more aesthetically pleasing i mean we haven't gotten to that part yet but i with the proposal of possibly doing some sort of wedding venue we wouldn't want a really tall chain link fence i think that would take away from the aesthetics of it so that's something we can discuss you know that that design is tentative mm -hmm. you know it's a draft and you know we can work on that as you know with the different committees so something just to keep in mind that that can be changed and yep sounds good thank you so uh strawberry park community garden that was like wildfire i mean we talked about it a month ago and like it would be a good idea and then it's i'm guessing you must have mentioned it like real quiet in your office and public works heard about it and it happened well, we also had a rabbit run benefit which was to raise funds <clears throat> for um the community garden and then public works just got it done it was kind of a overnight it was amazing um 
And huge thank you to Sean and Dominic and Greg on that. So um, that one's about half full at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we have gotten a lot of interest, but a lot of people haven't actually committed to reserving it, so yeah. which has been interesting. But um, we there's still already vegetables and other things over there, which is which is kind of fun. There has been some discussion or request from some of the council members to look at potentially having um, a couple of fruit trees there that would be available to the public just to go and pick as they wanted to. Um, then that's something that we've been trying to discuss the logistics of if, if that would make sense or if that could would create um, more maintenance work then there would be a benefit so that's one of the things that's been discussed but kind of wanted to mention it to you all as well i appreciate the tree notice so before you arrived here probably three years ago we started with getting rid of the fruit trees that were in there because no one was picking them yeah but no one was picking them and they were drawing hornets and wasps like crazy and if you walked through there um it was a battle zone. So we put the request in to have those removed because nobody actually went and picked the fruit, which was odd. So that's just some feedback. We we actually worked to get rid of the things because we couldn't get them. So you said council has been requesting that? Just a couple council members. Um, it hasn't been a task that's been assigned. It's just been something that's been brought up by yeah. a couple of the council members. So that was one of the things I wanted to mention in this meeting. So yeah. hearing this feedback is very helpful so yeah appreciate yep. that because we don't we want to have that park be as positive as possible so maybe we wait on the trees we keep the community garden and we just continue to discuss that for now i did find a grant program for a community orchard <clears throat> so i need to i don't know if to find orchard for me. No. <laughs> fruit trees. Oh, I was going to say, is cannabis considered an orchard? Or? <laughs> yeah, what's an orchard? I think it can be as much as you want it, or how much less. So let me, let me. I think it was the Fruit Tree Planting Foundation. I was looking for community garden type information, and I stumbled across that. So let me. We do some research and I'll throw it out there because part of it is you get you get like funding for the design. So placement of your trees. I know that's a super wet park. So it's not just they're going to buy you some fruit trees. They're going to help you kind of design um, pruning and maintenance of fruit trees. You know, those are things to think of. But there is funding out there to do such a animal. That's interesting. I will see if I can pull that stuff straight up. Funding to put a fence around the community garden. <laughs> Are there deer in there? It's, uh, yeah, okay. that's what I wondered about deer. Is there deer? So I don't want to say this rudely or whatever, but um, so when you guys do those things, I mean, here I'm talking to the city though, do you bring it to the parks board so we can talk about it? Or is that what you're doing today? So that's one of those things that where this is a maintenance piece that had already been requested and had been part of the, the council, it's not necessarily it's not changing the design of the parks. Um, it was something that we did bring up to the park committee as a heads up a couple times, um, and then it moved forward. So I remember that. We just talked about it in here. Just. Yeah. Yeah. And we were talking about possibly doing it. So, and just to clarify on roles, um, yes, the Parks Board has, uh, their, your role is to recommend capital improvements oh, yeah. to parks. The The main avenue for those um, should be the the, master, the Parks Master Plan and updates to it. Right. And because those should dictate those, ideally that's had public input and gone through mm -hmm. a big process that this is what people want and a good use of our city land. Uh, and so I would encourage using that process that we're just starting right now to to get all of that planned out and and get all the public input for it so we have that roadmap going forward. Right. That's good. Okay. Well, we'll see how the that'll be interesting with the deer because I actually left my gate 
open to my garden, which has 12 foot fencing to keep the deer out. And sure enough, I walked out there and there's the head down in my strawberries just going nuts. And uh, it was all I could do not to shut the gate. Just and then let my dog in there or something. Yeah, but I got the I got the deer out and then I shut the gate and then I kicked myself. Don't leave the gate open. So I had a fruit tree that we had to cut down because the deer would eat the fruit off the tree. Yeah. Yep. Um, Sean, the two trees that are there, is there any concern with those or they're in the back corner, right? Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Are they apples? Bombs? apples. They're two apple trees. And, then, and they're pretty out of control. Yeah. Oh, they haven't been trimmed in a lifetime. And it's drier in that part of the park. If I remember correctly, walking around there in the wintertime, it doesn't get as soupy as it does straight back. Yeah. Okay. Well, our last item of our new items is Frisbee Golf. Did you happen to talk to anybody yet on that? So it's on my list still, but um, because of our short staff and mm -hmm. just the amount of projects we have right now, it's just kind of jumped down the list of priorities at this point. So yeah. I, it's still on the list and I still know the people to contact, but it's just not something um, that we're moving forward on right at this time until we get, you know, we've got the bridge, we've got the bandstand, we've, you know, got quite a few projects going on. Right. So to tackle one more right now, I think is just enough. What does it take to do a Frisbee golf thing? Do you have to, do they go in concrete or is it just post in the ground? I, I've seen them as posts in the ground. I've seen them in concrete. Usually the, the courses that are really nice will have a, not only the end posts that you're, you're heading toward, but they'll also have a, um, a post in the ground at the beginning of that particular hole mm -hmm. um, that would give you some information about where it is and all that. Yeah, um, you can you can do them with that. You can do it without that and just have a map that people use. Uh, there's a there's options there. The, the main thing you need is space and you need posts and gates and signage. Yeah, um, I, not to beat a dead horse, but sounds ideal for a parks master plan. Mm. It was just something we started this two years ago with the Frisbee idea, and mm -hmm. you had found somebody that was had knowledge of it and was volunteering to help us with it, you know, the layout and and all that. So I thought it might have been an easier thing to accomplish in Sankey to get people walking through the park, because it was we know as we increase foot traffic in the park, we decrease degenerate things from happening in the park. So and when he approached me about it, um, he he is the one that designs them yeah um he did um waterloo right um but he also said you know there are grant programs and whatnot just but with maintenance purposes right now of yeah. parks and just our park projects you know as blair said you know it's definitely something we should put in the parks master plan sure um it's just hasn't been on the top of the priority list with everything else we have going yep. on right now so okay. but it is still on my list okay so. Uh, so my last question for Blair, is the land that the city owns that's a campground, is it now a city park? Because <laughs> last month it was just land owned by the city, but you posted it online as Quarry Park. So it's, I went, uh, okay, what is it? It's a good question. <laughs> it's just a name. So it's still land, and this is a pilot program. Um, over the next little while, we do want to turn it into a park. And we also want to bring it back and have the whole community engagement piece and yeah. and work with you all on some additional design ideas. Right now, though, it's still not a park. It's being called Quarry Park. <laughs> um, but we even also want to do a whole renaming yeah. of it and everything. Right. It's actually developed as park property. Yeah. Well, I know because we talked about if you did something big, you'd have somebody's name that would you know which makes complete sense i just had to give you a bad time because oh I you know. beat I, me up it was not a park and then a week later it's <laughs> i'm reading cory park yeah. on believe me i'm getting weird phone calls from the city attorney too because he's oh. looking at park rules and what park rules <laughs> and all that stuff and and then he gets different information and calls me again i yeah i don't know i just didn't want to miss an opportunity <laughs> to harass you for it's, a minute it's a uh it's a moving target let's yeah. put it that way and we're calling it that because that's also what's on 
Yeah, that's that's where and that's what's on the page. That's, yeah, what exactly. that's what we've been calling it for so, years. I know. So I think Joe actually coined that yep, term. He did. So it's just we've all just stuck with it. Yep. Yeah. For convenience, if nothing else. Yeah. yeah. So timing is good, right? Because a consultant's doing the master park plan will take a deep dive into that since it's new territory. Or uh, that'll be part of the. It'll be definitely part of the outreach portion of the master plan. Now, it's important to recognize what a master plan and what it isn't. A master plan is is looking at the the lands that we have and it's looking at it does a lot. Of, there's a lot of community outreach that is part of it that is mainly looking at park standards. What are the types of parks we want? Yeah. What are the amenities that should be included in those types of parks? How far does someone have to walk to get to a park? Mm -hmm. um, what should be our standard for that? And, and what are areas we want to expand to? Um, at the same time, each individual park, it's not going to have a detailed master plan okay. for each individual park. Right. That is something that's going to have to happen in the future right. for the when a, a park uh, is is rehabilitated. We want to put together that this is where things go right. kind of thing. Any changes that need to be made in those individual parks, that level of detail will likely not be in this parks master plan. However, all the desired amenities will be there. Uh, yeah. And and such so we can we can certainly have it included in the outreach to say hey residents do you want a um a frisbee golf course and um where would you want that to be and how big would you want it to be that kind of thing it doesn't necessarily go down to the level of detail of okay if you're putting it in sankey park which portions of the park are you right. using for it that kind of thing oh, it makes sense so i went down and looked at it after the safety fair <clears throat> stood there in the parking area because I thought there was an RV there already because I'm looking at it from my house all the time and Cause you can look down. yeah because I thought there was a I thought there was already an RV there and then I found out it's actually the uh porta potty it's just a big one so it looked like a small RV big white small RV down there I went well it could be one <laughs> you never know in time so the good part is if anything happens down there I'll call you just, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That'd be great. It could be our unofficial camp host. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have any last minute items? Yes. So some of you know this. I don't I don't think it happened after our last meeting. We had one of our celebration dogwoods. I think it was the Margaret Putnam tree in Sankey. The bark. Like 100% of the bark was peeled on this tree. Oh, no. Like, and a tree can survive 25% girdling, not 100%. And the interesting twist is we have cameras in the park, and Sean reviewed them. And you want to describe what you saw? <laughs> it was several kids, probably six to eight. And I, you know, they might not have known what they were doing to the tree. The bad thing was the the adult mother, whoever, was sitting right next to it the, on, on the table on her phone while these kids just ravaged the tree, took the bamboo stakes, peeled all the bark. It's pretty frustrating. Did you turn it into the police? Do we know what tree that was? What type? Yeah. It's a dogwood. I, okay. have the, I have the list. Of we should species. probably think about replacing that yeah there. it's going to think it's alive here for a while but probably by the end of the summer it'll it'll be dead but um no, we don't have water to it so probably maybe but um i mean long term it's not gonna i mean peeling all the bark up a tree is like taking all your skin off because then the water can't flow up and down the tree because you've interrupted the cambium layer so um, I was really irritated but when he told me it was little kids. I'm like, Ugh. so teachable moment. If you see something, say something. If you see something I at do. a park and it just seems odd. I think that's something I we do. can put out some. Uh, I, I some didn't know what kind of message you would put out. I mean, it's like we had somebody peel the tree at Ashbrook. Ashbrook, you know, they just caught a piece of loose bark and went like this. It's not huge. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, we can. As we as we put out different communications on parks yeah. and and the parks that we want people to enjoy, I think we can put out some communications on good park behavior and yep. um, and encouraging people to report yeah. stuff or stop people from doing things that they know is wrong. 
uh, movies in the park, Ashley and T- actually Tyson came over, ran over to us and said, those kids are climbing on the very top and they're doing this. And they're so Ashley went over there because Angela was busy putting up the screen and stuff. And they wouldn't listen to Ashley to cussing her out, all kinds of stuff. So Angela had to go over there. I mean, and the moms, again, sitting there, you know, on their phone, it's like, what? You know, first off, you're going to get hurt. You know, and the rules are you don't climb on the top of the play equipment. It's just, it is very frustrating. And if if Tyson is 11 and knows it's wrong, then somebody's not being taught right. It's unfortunate that we're at this point in our society because these are the same people that can't push their shopping cart back at Safeway that I harass (laughs) and pretend I'm taking a video of them. And I do that every time I go there. It's a real irritant for me. So my kids will tell you a great story about Southern California and me going off on somebody. So <laughs> so um, to loop back to the tree, I will go. I have the list of when we ordered them and I will call the um, nursery that we got that from and just see what they have and find out the cost of it and see about getting it replaced. I would just suggest we not place it, plan it till fall. Yeah, just no. Yeah. And if I can, but if I can get it reserved and they have reserved one, one. Yeah. Because yeah. there was... Two really nice, even, I mean, we planted them all at the same time. Those trees are, what, five years old? Those and the cherries maybe now, five or six? We put those in no. when we first started our construction. Yeah. So it's only like three years three ago. Years? Oh, three really? to four, yeah. yeah. Wow. Three. Because they're just, they're really beautiful and they had a nice shape. Mm-hmm. And the, all those trees now are at the point where we can look at how we want to mm-hmm. shape them for the future. So yeah. was it the one that was leaning or was it the straight one? It was a straight one, wasn't it? Dang it. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so just, you know, when you think about trees and once they come out of winter dormancy and the sap starts flowing, spring is when the bark is really loose. And it's important for when you're working around your young trees, lawnmowers and stuff. I mean, you basically just touch the bark and you can you can damage it. And then as summer and it dries out, it, it tightens up. But um yeah, something must just have intrigued the little kids, something loose, and it's like... Can you oh, put that wire around it like we did at the dog park? You want to really? wire wrap all the trees? <laughs> Wouldn't look. I don't know. Until they, you know... <clears throat> the thing is, I mean, they're, you know, every spring their bark is loose, so if somebody just has the wherewithal to carve on the tree or peel it, you know, until they get like our... I mean, for a season until they get healthier and stuff. But then, you know, like Blair was saying, just make more public announcements. You know, the trees are, this is happening right now. And don't climb on top of the play structure. And Okay, any other? Yeah. Um, so I was walking around the floor saying somebody approached me and they were asking where is the smoking area. And there isn't one. In all the part that says... No, they have to go outside of the park, so they would have to go out in the street. And that is one thing. Every time I'm there, I go and tell people, especially movies in the park, I will go find them and say, you have to go out in the street. It cannot be any anywhere inside the parks. There is no smoking allowed. So it sounds like we need to change signage. We need to make yeah, sure. basically, because it's, it's not no smoke. That's it's not no it's not smoking only in designated areas. It's no smoking at all. Yeah, yeah. right. <clears throat> I got a couple of questions, if I might. He still has oh, one more. Yes, one. He's not done. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, let's see. I was in Ashbrook, and I noticed there was on like exercise bars with uh, like instruction. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can incorporate that into the path to the mm-hmm. department path. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something that Deb has brought up several yeah. times. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um. So there are some. Th- this would be something for the parks master plan, but I'm just curious about any interest in this. Um, there are a couple agencies that create fitness parks, and there's some grant funding for it that would be coming forward um, that would cover the majority of it. Uh, is this something that this committee has discussed or or looked at? This, therefore, adult fitness, um, they have various outdoor gyms. They get combined with an app. And um, it can also help towards any type of blue zone rating or anything if we ever wanted to go that route. But I just wondered if this was a conversation that's already been discussed. 
we've we've talked about the, the exercise stuff in Ashbrook that's there because Deb has used it over mm -hmm. the years. Um, but that was as far as we've talked about that would be a good thing to have and to expand. And I think two of the items are broken, correct? Yes. Yeah. So that was just things we had talked about before was, you know, could we get that? Because that's the parks. Yeah. Yeah. I think but um, we weren't aware of the additional. No. I think we've worked really hard just trying to get the Sankey Park, especially in tip top shape, so we can use it. But I, I like that idea. I have an eyes on the um, leadership thing. We put the exercise stuff in Waterloo Park, and that that was really good. It'd be something like, you know, we could add to it. I I don't know, maybe down the road so these guys don't, aren't overloaded again. I think it would definitely want to be something that was phased out, you know, a few years from now. Yeah. But um, I didn't know if there was even any interest or if it had been discussed. And some of these programs, there's one in Albany that has another park that's similar to this, and they're quite nice. Right. So, um, but like I said, I think that would be something kind of down the road. Um, have that as part of the master plan discussion. I just wondered if this was even anything but had been discussed and either not looked or not wanted to move forward or if it was a new idea. Yeah, so, no, we've right. discussed it. We just haven't moved forward with it. Perfect. Thanks. Sean, could you tell us what it's going to look like tomorrow? <laughs> 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 the nice thing about this one is that they would just construct it for us. Oh, that would so. be nice. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilor Trask. I, I, would, I would like to know if we can ban those people from the, from the uh, park when they destroy stuff. Yeah. And if we can, I think we should do that, if that's possible. I don't know. Um, they should be made accountable. Yeah, and I agree. Well, the parent should be yes. made accountable. Well, whoever that is, that's just my opinion. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Before this came up, I have something else I wanted to talk about. The, the part, the Corey Park thing. Uh, I, I, I wanted to have that happen. Oh, no, a counselor wanted to know how, how that happened 10 years ago, just about. And then all of a sudden we got a little thing from somebody else. I won't mention her name, but she, uh, <laughs> I, I talked to her about it and, and all of a sudden they're down the building it. I'm thinking, <laughs> she, is she a tiger girl? Hey, what? <laughs> she, she did, I mean, all of a sudden it's just bam, it's done. I'm thinking, what the heck? But I think it's a good thing. And if we can't use it for right now, that's fine. It's there. Yeah. And the communication maybe weren't as good as we could have been with you guys, but that's that's beside the point. At this moment, it's yeah. done, and it's a good thing, and it's good. It's going to be really, really good. It's not going to be just a culture sculpture type thing. It's going to right. be really good. So if you want to use a, a paddling thing, you can do that down there because there's going to be one there. Ah. <laughs> so I was going to ask Sean. When you turn them, do you turn that film into the police department and so they check, find out who those kids are? Yeah, in this case, they asked for a license plate. Our cameras weren't able to catch that. So I have pictures of the the lady, but not her car. So in past instances, when there's been graffiti or vandalism that we've, we've been caught, they have been trespassed from the park. Yeah. Mm. I think that goes for 30 days, but what we've done in the past pd does that not us we yeah. we request it right that time and those kids uh we caught them and i took pictures of them pushing that shopping cart into the creek i don't know whatever happened with that so i don't know i didn't follow up with the police but at one time i think ashley said you know they were still working on it so we'll say the pd is there within minutes every time we call them. And we, I used to not want to bother them over kids on Dullenberg Bridge or something. Now we call them for anything. And uh, Officer Hickox, a couple of weeks ago, there were some kids on the Dullenberg Bridge, which is closed. And uh, he was there in a couple minutes, ran all the way past us, yelled at the kids, gave them a really good uh, <laughs> talking to. So they're very, very helpful in that. but. And they're not there. Bad things yeah. happen. Okay. Hey, any other last minutes? We're already behind over our time. So nothing else. Thank you for the meeting. Uh, last note. Thank you, Public Works. As always, the parks look impressive, and really do appreciate it. 
and north side has come out to look really nice with all the work that was done down there so thank you we really appreciate it that concludes our june meeting goodness i remembered what month